Welcome everybody to our webinar on LinkedIn sourcing candidates. This is the second in the series of three webinars we're doing. The first one was done by LinkedIn themselves. Uh, Bob Moody uh, was talking about some of their paid for tools a few weeks ago. In a few weeks' time, I've got another very exciting one organized. i um, not too sure exactly how that's going to pan out just yet, but uh, I'll give you some clues later on. We're going to talk about sourcing on LinkedIn. Before I do that, I'll just mention myself. My name is Shane McCusker. I run Intelligent Software. I develop software systems for recruitment agencies predominantly, um, which are there to help you manage all your information, get more value out of your information, make more placements. Um, and that's great. That's how I earn my living. If you want to buy any of our products, please do give me a shout or, or let's have a look at it. This webinar is not about our products at all. This webinar is about sourcing. We had a lot of people asking me, why do we run webinars for free? Well, they didn't really. They said, are you sure it's free? I said, yes, absolutely. It's free. It's free, honestly. Um, and uh, the reason being is because it keeps our profile high, but it also shares information within the industry. If it helps you become a better recruiter and it helps you work in a smarter way, brilliant. Grow your business. Be more successful. If you want to work as a better recruiter, then we've got a whole raft of software products that help really good recruiters. So we're here to try and create really good recruiters. Um, there's a uh, my Twitter name is uh, one intelligence or intelligence spelled with a one, and you can follow me on that. And if you've got any tweets about today's webinar, please do so. Simply from the point of promoting what we do, please say nice things about us. Put it out on the internet. And tell your friends. We're doing more and more webinars, uh, and there's all sorts of exciting things happening. Okay, anyway, on to the main event, which is LinkedIn and sourcing. So what is LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a website. I have no financial or um, economic interest in the company, other than the fact that I think it's very useful. Uh, earlier on this year, they were floated on the stock exchange to great fuss uh, and made an awful lot of money for themselves. And prior to that and subsequently from that, they've been making all sorts of changes to their website and doing all sorts of different things. And we'll touch upon some of those in today's session. But ultimately, LinkedIn is about creating profiles of people, generally professional businessy types, but really anybody nowadays. It's got over 115 million members globally, but to be honest, ignore that number because it will be more than that by the time you're, I, I, I'm quoting it from a, at least a few weeks ago, um, and they're, they're much more than that now. In the areas that we have audience for this webinar, UK, Ireland, Europe, South Africa, uh, you've got millions of people in all those territories uh, that, are, that have got profiles on it. So it's big. Um, the reason it's important for recruiters is because a LinkedIn profile looks a bit like a CV. It's not a CV, but it looks like one, and it certainly contains a lot of the information that's there. So whenever you want to get involved in recruitment sourcing, isn't it a great place to start where you have something that looks a little bit familiar to you? And um, I suppose LinkedIn, uh, from a recruiter's point of view, there are three areas that you need to think about, and think about them separately. The one that we're going to focus on today is about finding people, and, and that's very important. Another one which is also very, very important is about being found on LinkedIn because although we're all recruiters, I'm not a recruiter, but you're all recruiters uh, and your mission is to go out and find people, the vast majority, the 150 million people on LinkedIn aren't recruiters and they're there to be found. And not only are they there to be found, but they're there to find other people. Um, so it's very important that you have a profile on LinkedIn that makes you easily findable. And I'll, I'll mention some of the things that are there. And the other thing is that don't ever lose sight of what social recruiting and social media is. It's about being social. So there's also a big aspect of your use of, it, of LinkedIn has to, has to consider an engagement strategy, which is a high and convoluted way of saying you have to make friends with people, you have to chat. You have to chat with people. Uh, LinkedIn, of all the social media sites, is probably the least social. You're not going to go on LinkedIn and talk about what you had for breakfast or share holiday photographs. Uh, it tends to be business-related conversation. It tends to be um, you know, serious conversation, and that's fine. Uh, so there's, there's, but there's definitely social aspects to that. And the way that we use LinkedIn, I think most people that are that are on this webinar will will hopefully know of me from my activities significantly on LinkedIn through the, the work I do in LinkedIn groups, whether it's the South African Recruiters Group, the Irish Recruiters Group, um, all the other groups that I'm involved in, there's lots of them, uh, and I'll regularly post on stuff, and it's about 
keeping a presence, but it's also about seeing other people that keep a presence and interacting and learning. And that's I get an awful lot of, of learning and resource from my involvement with uh, people, whether it be online or physically through recruitment events and whatever else, and I've been lucky enough to, to travel the world and meet people, uh, and hence the reason I'm sharing some of the information now. Okay, so those are the three things, to find people, to be found, and to be social. Let's have a look at the LinkedIn profile. Uh, this is my profile, uh, and I just want to go through this because I'm aware of people, you know, it's, it's, LinkedIn is now a very complex tool, and a lot of the time it's easy to lose sight of, of the subtleties of it. But let's look at the profile and what's here. Um, ultimately, it's about you, you put in history of your, your employment details. You can put in education details. So this is the bit that looks You've got summary information. But there's all stuff added in here now as well. Look at this. This is skills. Now, this was introduced uh, a few, I think, in February time. Uh, this is new. Um, and it's about way to find people. You need to think about that. You've got references. I made some references in a second time. You've got all the groups that people have done. So this is all the stuff that's on Buzz. Um, let me just go in and edit my profile and I'll show you this. Um, sorry to use my profile, but that's the only one I, I get access. You'll see over on the right hand side here it says 100% profile completeness. And that's quite important. Let's focus in on the thing about LinkedIn about being found first of all. I've, to some extent, not brilliantly, but to some extent I've tried to optimize my profile so that I can be found, or at least I create a big network. Um, and that's important. Um, and whenever you have 100% completeness, LinkedIn marks your profile. So if you have, if, you, if I didn't have education history, I wouldn't have 100%. If I didn't have some references, I wouldn't have 100% completeness. If I didn't have employment history there filled up, I wouldn't have 100% completeness. Whenever you have 100% completeness in your profile, you're going to start appearing higher up on, on LinkedIn searches. And that's very useful because when people want to find out who's an expert in the field, you want them to find you. Okay. Within that, you've got your profile section. You can update that. That gets circulated. Some people connect it to Twitter so that everything they, they, they tweet about um, goes up there. I'm not entirely convinced that's massive useful, so I've cut it back a little bit uh, and now be a little bit more prudent about what I put out on LinkedIn. Uh, connections I'll talk about in a second. Um, notice on this bit here where it says add sections. Add sections to reflect achievements and experiences in your profile. Look at this. This is worth noting. Look at all the different things you can now add in. Certificates, courses, honors and awards, languages, interesting one, organizations. Um, you can add in sections to your LinkedIn profile to give you information in all these areas. Now, it's really important you know about this because as well as being found, these are all sections you can put stuff in that become indexable and searchable to some extent. I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's also a case as a sourcer, you need to know that, oh, that's available on LinkedIn, so I can go in and search for people with language skills. Two weeks ago with, with Bob Moody talking on the pay for tools, somebody said he wanted somebody who spoke Portuguese. Uh, and I smirked to myself because I thought I'll feed this one to Bob, see what he does. Because the LinkedIn tools don't actually allow you to search some of these things. They've created them, but at the moment you can't search them. But I'll show you ways later on with Google, you can search them because Google indexes everything. But be aware of what's available there. Go in and experiment with this. Update your profile regularly. Every time you update your profile, it, it tells your community and your network that you're doing so. So it's no bad thing to keep yourself in front of in people's attention. Um, some of the stuff here you'll see on my summary profile. I did a webinar earlier on the year with Craig Fisher. Craig is one of the very, very few certified internet trainers, uh, LinkedIn trainers in North America. Uh, so rare are they. In fact, he's the only one I know in North America. The only other accredited trainer, which is the only one in Europe, is Jaco Valkenberg, and I've done some stuff with Jaco as well. He wrote a book on, on LinkedIn for recruiters. Um, and Craig was saying, this is what he does. Pardon me, not my phone, not playing music around. Uh, he puts in keywords everywhere in, in every section. So you'll see in my section, I've got specialties. I've got my name in there. I've got intelligence recruitment software. I want people to find my profile if they're interested in buying recruitment software or interested in looking at recruitment software. So I'm, I'm loading up my profile with keywords. Not only do I do a section, I also do it in most of my jobs as well. A useful thing to do, if people are searching for stuff, I want my, my profile to be keyword rich. One of the other things that, uh, and this is quite useful as well, LinkedIn although we're going to talk mainly about searching LinkedIn through LinkedIn today. LinkedIn is also marvelous in terms of being able to search it through Google and the other search engines, Bing really. And what's really important is that those search engines 
rank websites depending on how big they are and how important they are. And Google and Bing think LinkedIn is very, very big and very, very important. So if you get good keywords on your LinkedIn profile, it's going to come way ahead of any work you're able to do with your own website. My LinkedIn profile is much higher in Google ranking than Intelligent Software's website um, because of the fact that LinkedIn is, my, my website is in the fraction of the size of, of LinkedIn. So I want to have lots of pages on LinkedIn with my details on it, my keywords on it. And one of the fascinating ways that I can get keywords on more and more pages on LinkedIn, not just my own profile page, is I can put it on other people's profile pages. And I can do that if I write recommendations for them. And uh, I haven't done it too much. I need to do it more. Um, but it's quite nice that uh, whenever you write a recommendation for something, it's very nice for them and you say nice things about them, but it also puts your name on their profile page. And if they've got quite an active profile page with a big community behind them, then it's no bad thing for you because people who will come to their profile page will see your name associated with it and see what you do. So um, I would probably recommend that you both uh, get recommendations from people to the extent there's there's a, a diminishing return on this one. You, if you have a hundred of them, I don't believe people actually read them. Um, but it's useful to have recommendations. It's also useful to give recommendations. So even though this is a free webinar, if you like what we do, feel free to say nice things and give me a recommendation. If you're not following me on LinkedIn, please do so. Uh, I'll happily connect to, to recruiters. Um, and if you want to give me a recommendation, I would be very, very grateful for that. Um, I've only got three at the moment. They say nice things. I haven't gone looking for recommendations, so I just thought I'd mention it, given the fact that I'm talking to a large audience of people that are interested in LinkedIn. It seemed like a good idea at the time. What else have we got? Uh, yeah, groups. Groups are really useful. I'll talk about those later on. They're really useful to get involved in them there. They're very useful to monitor what's going on within your market space. It's very, very useful to be seen in a market space if you're active and interactive within groups. Um, a lot of some people think that they need to create their own group. I, I well, I've have created my own group, but to be honest, I'm not. I, I'm I'm influential in that group because I'm active in it. I'm not influential in the group because I manage it. Managing it is actually a little bit of a nuisance um, because we have to monitor it all the time. But you know, I could go into somebody else's group, and if I'm active and I'm engaging in conversation, I will be much more prominent than the person who who manages the group. So. I don't necessarily recommend people creating their own groups. Why would you? There are other groups out there. You can engage with those. They already have membership. You don't need to build up your own membership. Um, I've also had an awful lot of invites from people who create groups uh, for their own businesses. ABC Recruitment, join our group. Um, I don't know why I'd do that. Um, I, I'm not interested in joining. I'm very interested in talking to recruiters, but I, I don't see why I'd be interested in joining a group that is associated with a particular company. Unless, unless it was maybe LinkedIn, maybe I'd join that one, but uh, to find out what's going on there, because there'll be lots of discussion about it. But I would join a group if it's about a topic. So if you're involved in, say, I don't know, IT recruitment, then join or set up IT type recruitment groups. Talk about the subject you want to engage people with. Don't talk about join my group and I'll give you a list of job postings. You know, you can you can do email marketing for that or, or something more about groups are about discussions and about engagement and this is the big thing about being social and that's where groups come into their own. Okay, I'll go back to my profile. Um, if you profile. Uh, the other big, 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 big thing about LinkedIn is connections. Contacts, my contacts, let's go over here. Um, I've got a, a good number of contacts. Um, I have something I get around to building whenever I can, about two and a half thousand of them. Um, and contacts are brilliant. They're brilliant for a couple of reasons. One, whenever you connect with somebody, they form part of your network, and therefore you get better visibility of them and better visibility of the people they're connected to. Not only that, they and their network get better visibility of you, so it's an easier way to be found. The other thing about when you connect to somebody is when you connect to somebody, it's much easier to message them through LinkedIn because you can send them messages directly, but you also get LinkedIn gives you more information about them. It's more likely to give you contact information. Uh, and one of the things you can do whenever you're on your Connect page is you can export your connections. When you export your connections, you can export them to an Excel spreadsheet. It will give you their first name, surname, the company they work for, their job title, and their email address. So even if they don't put their email address on their profile, if you're connected to them and export your connections, you can get their email address. So um, 
uh, <laughs> apologies for this if you took offence, but obviously everybody's joined the webinar, so it didn't offend that many people I'm talking to. I actually downloaded my connections and then, then sent out the email about this webinar to them. Um, and it was easier to do that than trying to message people through LinkedIn because it limits you to only messaging uh, just through send mail 50 people at a time. Um, the other thing you can do is you can tag profiles. Um, and you can see that I've tagged a few people, so uh, I've got friends, I've got, these are people that are in the Republic of Ireland in the Irish Recruiters Group, these are people who are in the Irish Recruiters Group aren't in the Republic of Ireland, uh, and I, I do some work for the Irish Recruiters Group in Northern Ireland, and so these are the people I'll connect with um, to tell them we've got a, another event happening or whatever. Um, so uh, that's a nice way to tag people. Whenever you go and look in a profile, let's go in here. I'll show you this one. Sarah. Sorry to use your profile. You'll see that on the right hand side said tags. You can create your own tags, you can edit tags. Quite a nice way to manage your system. Although, um, yeah, I was talking to, uh, he mentioned here, Johnny Campbell, who put a post up saying this is this could replace your CRM system. No, it can't. It, it just, it's, it's a basic, basic way of sorting out profiles, but it, your ability to search them is very minimal. Um, and it's not that useful. But I, I use it to segregate people so that I can send out messages within LinkedIn and find people a little bit more easily. Okay, what else? So, connections. Uh, really good to find people, widens your network, really good to being found, and it improves your ability to get contact details out of LinkedIn for them. Let's go on and look about sourcing. Now today, the last time we ran a webinar, we focused on all sorts of clever techniques and little tricks we can break LinkedIn and, and find bugs in it and exploit those bugs. I'm going to try and avoid doing that today because I want to focus in on the basics of sourcing. Get into the, the mindset of a sourcer. A lot of recruiters, you come from a background, it's about interviewing candidates, it's about um, assessing skills, it's about uh, doing business development. It's about, you know, from a sourcer's point of view, you need to be a detective. You need to be thinking um, dynamically, thinking of clever ways, thinking of exceptions, and, and, and change your mindset in terms of being a sourcer, because it is a skill set you need to develop. So, say for example, I want to find a, a job title we all know and love. I am looking for a recruiter. Very simple. All I do is type in. This is a people search. I can also search for updates, jobs, companies, whatever else, but I want to search for people. So I'm looking for profiles, so I'm going to search for a recruiter. It's that simple. Whenever I run the search, it's given me um, 383,000 results. That's not bad, but this is global. And it's not massive whenever you consider there's 115 million people on the thing, but okay, it's a good number. It's a good number. Okay. Let's, let's pull this down. But say, for example, I'm only interested in people in, uh, well, you can see, in the United Kingdom, there's 16,000 of them. Um, but say, for example, on a smaller pool, we'll look at South Africa. South Africa. And how many have I got? I've got, oh, 1,085. Now, hold on a minute here. I have a fair idea that there are more than 1,085 recruiters in South Africa. Okay? So this is where the, the sorcerer's brain kicks in and saying, immediately, I'm missing people. There's a whole lot more people out there that I could, I should be able to see. Why am I not seeing them? And the reason I'm not seeing them, well, there's a couple of reasons for it, a whole pile of reasons actually. But one is that there's a lot of recruiters out there who don't call themselves recruiters. They'll call themselves recruitment consultants. So I could modify my search and say, well, instead of looking for a recruiter, I want to find consultant. Okay, we'll look for it in the singular, probably more prominent. When I do that, oh, I'll try and spell it correctly, it really makes a big difference. When I, I think I found someone there who spelled it wrong. That's bad when they misspell their own job title. Um, whenever you do that, I'm getting 6,152. Now, uh, I've made a deliberate mistake here, and the reason I did that is just to, to highlight the point. Whenever I type in recruitment consultant, LinkedIn is looking for the word recruitment and consultant. It's not looking for recruitment consultant. So, um, because what it's doing is saying I'm looking for that word and that word, and it doesn't really care. So it could be a consultant who does, who uh, has has had some experience of recruitment or uses the word recruitment for another sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to surround it by quotation marks. There's a double quotation mark, and I'm going to run that. Let's look at the search results. It, it halves 
3,100. Now, one of the skills of a sorcerer is, one, you don't want to miss people. You want to include everybody. But the biggest challenge is you, you want to get rid of the false positive hits. You want to get rid of people that are wrong. So I want to narrow this down. Um, and by putting quotation marks around it, it, it says recruitment consultant. Now, unlike Google, or, or Bing, which is the other major search engine, when you put something in quotation marks, it's very precise. It says, I must have just recruitment consultant. LinkedIn search is much more vague than that. It's happy to say, you know, recruitment consultant or, you know, uh, some other variation on it. It might even look for the word recruitment to separately consultant. It's, you know, it, 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 it is not as precise as Google. It gives you a bigger result range in Google. It's important you know these things because to, to, to source effectively, you've got to have some understanding as to what you're getting and what you're missing because you don't like missing stuff and it's there for you and you don't like getting stuff you don't need. This is recruitment consultant, but is it including people that have a recruiter? No, it's not. How do I do both? You use the operator or. When I say the operator or, I don't mean the word or. In other words, I'm not looking for or in a profile. This is case sensitive. You notice, by the way, if I was to say recruitment consultant with a capital R, look at my results saying 40131, doesn't change. If I changed OR to a lowercase O, it certainly does change because lowercase OR is the word OR. Um, and so saying recruitment consultant and OR and recruiter, and I've got very few of those. So I'm going to change that back to a capital O and lo and bold. I've got a slightly more sensible result set. So that's how you include other things. But I have a sense I'm still missing stuff. And I'm struggling to think of what else would you call a recruitment consultant or a recruiter? Well, let's prompt ourselves. Let's go in and have a look at somebody's profile to see what's going on. Just click the first one on the list and just for another reason. He's a recruitment consultant, he says there. But he's also calls himself a headhunter, executive search, recruiter at human capital. You know, so these are other phrases that I hadn't thought of. Well, that's useful. Maybe I should go back and add those in as well, which I will do in a second. And that will add more and more people onto my search result. So I'm, I'm not excluding people, which is quite useful. I want to point out another thing. This gentleman came up first on my search out of 4,000 odd recruiters. And I was actually playing with this last night. And this gentleman was coming up first when I was doing searches globally with various keywords. And I thought, that's unusual. How come? And this is how come. Look at his current job title in the summary section. And it, below it, it says see all. That's quite unusual to see see all at the bottom of current. Look what he's done. He has got lots and lots of job titles. And they're all current. If I scroll down, well, which is a big profile, look at all his jobs. He doesn't have descriptions in here, but he's got titles. All of them have start dates and the to present. All of them are current jobs. So it's a little bit cheeky what he's done in the sense that this almost certainly doesn't reflect him as a, as, a, as a person. It doesn't look like a CV. You wouldn't send that on to a class. Here's a CV or a candidate. But uh, what's done is that it is um, managed to get him right up at the top of all, all the, the Google searches that I'm running. I don't know if I'd recommend doing it to this extent, but if you look at some of the other people, uh, you can see, let's have a look at this one. Uh, you can see, why did he come up top of the list? Why didn't I come up top of the list if I was looking for something that was related to my profile? Um, and again, you know, she's got lots and lots of job titles, uh, lots of keys to, to up on for LinkedIn, lots of things that are relevant. So whenever we, we reflect on how to be found, if you want to know how to be found, look at profiles that you're finding and see what, are the, what is it that they are doing that means they're top of the list. Why am I not top of the list? Search for yourself. Useful thing to do. Okay, so we could go in and add in, um, let's try it then, headhunter or recruitment consultant or whatever. Pull up your string. Look, we've added a few more people on. Not too many. So I suspect that most headhunters have recruitment or recruiter mentioned in their profile, but it gives us a few more people. Not bad. Okay, what else can we talk about? <clears throat> um, yeah, if I am recruiting a recruiter, say, I probably don't want to get some people. So I am getting this result set, but maybe this is too much. Maybe there's a lot of people here that are just no good to me. So how do I get rid of some of those people I don't want? Well, one of the person I don't want to try and contact would be somebody who worked for themselves, who ran their own company, because chances are they're not going to want another job. They might do. 
but they're they're not they're not the low hanging fruit I'm going to go for first of all. So I don't want an owner, and you can do that. I'm just going to move this head onto one because I don't want my string. I can leave it in there, but I don't want to confuse the confuse the people we're doing this webinar for. If I was to type in owner and brackets recruitment consultant or recruiter. And run that search. This is quite a complicated search. I'll go through it in a second. I'm going to find 375 people. So these are people that have a recruitment consultant or recruiter on their profile and also have owner. And look at the people I have. Uh, owner, uh, hands-on recruitment, recruiting owner, whatever. So this is what I'm now finding are the people that I don't want. And I can do the opposite search. I can say I want to find all the recruiters and recruitment consultants and everybody who isn't an owner. All I have to do is put a minus sign in front of the word owner and run that search. And now my result, look at this, 3658 results. So previously it was 4,000 and something. Now I've removed 300 and something from results. So I've removed the people that are owner on their profile. So that gives me a better result. I could also remove you know, people who have director on their profile or CEO or you know those type of positions. Uh, I could also maybe hone in and say, uh, with this and operator, I, I want to say branch manager. Run that search. What have I got? I haven't tried that before. 102 people. So look, look at this. So you know this is this is really tying it in nicely. Let me look at this. This is called a Boolean search, by the way. Um, you, you'll uh, I'm mentioning it not to confuse, simply so that if you hear the term, don't be alarmed by it. A Boolean search simply means you're using operators within the search and the operators you're using are the word and, the word or, uh, you could also use the word not. And um, <clears throat> for my sins, I, for anybody who's interested, used to be an electronic engineer. Electronic engineers were involved in Boolean long before because computers, bina binary numbers, ones and nots, how you design processors, the sort of stuff I used to do way back when. Pardon me. Got a bit of a cough at the moment. <clears throat> my throat's going. Boolean algebra was invented for us as electronic engineers. That was the stuff the computers were built on. And in my days as an academic, I used to teach this stuff, and it always confused people. But ultimately, just think about your language. I'm looking for a branch manager, and I'm looking for this or this. Whenever you're using the terms and and or together, you've always got to have brackets. <clears throat> pardon, pardon me. Oh, my, my throat's causing me problems today. I knew this was going to happen. So um, what we're looking for is if I didn't have brackets, the computer would be confused. Do I mean owner, or sorry, branch manager and recruitment consultant or recruiter? Or do I mean uh, branch manager and recruitment consultant or recruiter? <clears throat> and the brackets sort out the logic for that. So simple rule is use ands and ors, capitalize them, use quotation marks around phrases like recruitment consultant. And if you're using and and or together, I mean, always include brackets. Sorry, I'm going to take a, a drink here. My oh, <clears throat> suffering today. Anyway, where are we now? So those are some of the rules. And what I've done here, I've deliberately today tried to keep this as simple as possible because all I'm using is this this one little text box to build up these strings. And you can see I'm getting a really good result set. 102 people. I can go through that quite quickly. LinkedIn will connect me and give me all their profiles. I can see who's who and what's going on. What else? Let me show you a few more things we can do here. I'm going to press this more button. We've got an advanced search button <coughs> over on the over on the right hand side here. But if I press the more button, it gives me the same thing anyway. And what this means is rather than searching for the keyword branch manager, I'm just going to remove this here. I could say, well, I actually want it to be in a job title branch manager and I can say the current or past job title when I run that search what am I getting sorry hold on a second now this is defaulted to the United Kingdom and I was actually looking for uh, South Africa uh, this is a little bit buggy at the moment um, so I was playing with it last night and the advanced on LinkedIn is occasionally it just gives you strange things it doesn't do what you expect it to do so when I say branch manager is the current title, I had 101 results before and now I'm down to 83. If I move that to the current position and run the search again, <clears throat> what am I down to? 18 results. 
So you can see how the advanced search enables you to reduce it down and down. I could also use or in here. Say, for example, or say I'm looking for somebody who's a senior in their title, branch manager, or a, maybe a senior recruiter. Run that search. Opens it up again for me a bit, and I've got 286 results. And look at this recruitment consultant. Uh, I'm looking for current job titles. A senior. There we go. Senior recruiter for Belinda there. So you can see how with these tools and clever thinking about it, get your thought processes right. If you think, so what keywords can I use to search? How can I find these people? You can expand or contract your search. I you think you should be looking to get, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 people within a short list, and then you want to get more in detail with them. So hopefully that gives you some, some idea. Some of the other things you can do here, sorting. By default, it sorts by relevance, but look at the other things you can sort by. I can sort by my relationship to them. It's sort of the same thing, uh, but not quite the same thing, in that it will give me all my first three connections, first of all. I can sort by relationships and recommendations. So it's going to prioritize those people that um, Stacy here has 14 recommendations on her profile. So she's going to become a first. This is another good reason to recommend people, because when you recommend people, you can ask them, return the favor, please give me your recommendation. Uh, and ask people for recommendations. Um, so that's, that's a useful thing to do. Connections I also find very useful. If you sort people by connection, bear in mind what you want to do here. You want to connect with people uh, relatively easily. And the people you're going to most easily cr create with are those people that are going to be active on LinkedIn. Because they're going to say, yes, I want to connect with you and engage them in groups. So if you're actively involved in LinkedIn, chances are you have more connections than somebody who, who hasn't. Uh, recruiters tend to be very heavily connected, so it's no surprise to see lots of people here with 500 plus connections. Uh, and then you've got some of the other ones, keywords as well. It's interesting, there is a big difference between relevance and keywords. So relevance is something other than just keywords, so it's going to pick up a recruiting consultant, recruiter, branch manager, or senior, and will give you a different type of result set. Pardon me. So I'm still coughing, but I switched my microphone off. Um, this is also useful because LinkedIn, the free version, limits the number of people you can see. And so it's quite useful to be able to change the order because you might get other people you don't know. What else can you do? You can also um, say that uh, when I look at my membership, 72 of these people are first degree connections. Some of them are secondary connections. Some of them are group members. Everybody else is a third degree connection. So if I don't want to see my first degree connections, I can remove them. Now, I was doing some searches in groups. Um, I'll show it later on, uh, and it's it's a bit buggy in this regard. LinkedIn, a lovely company, and they really do produce all sorts of stuff, but uh, the speed at which they're doing it, they, they do put a lot of bugs. Some of them take advantage of, some of them are just annoying. So these are second group, uh, second connections. Um, one of the things that you can also do <coughs> is, is if I move this down, you'll see whenever I go to group members, or uh, particularly third degree connections, you'll see that LinkedIn is deliberately preventing me getting all the information I want. In other words, it's not, it's not showing me the surnames of some of these people. If I go Angie here, for example, it's not giving me her surname. It's also uh, not allowing me, normally it says over here on the right-hand side, um, add Angie to your, your network, and it's not allowing me to do that. It's saying send in mail, but I have to pay LinkedIn money to send in mail. If it says see full name, if I click on that, LinkedIn's going to ask me to pay them money. And I, I don't really Pay the money, money, because I don't have to. What I can do is this is a really bad example. Hold on one second. I need a profile that has a bit more information. Uh, I could go digging around, but I don't really want to. I'd rather just have here. Okay, this will this will do me better. Okay, this person I don't have their details, but it's a senior recruitment consultant at a recruitment company. One of the things I said earlier on: LinkedIn is a big website that search engines love. Google will go out and index all the public profiles of LinkedIn. So Google has probably found this person's page and probably indexed it. And if I, within quotation marks please, put in that phrase into Google, guess what's going to come up? Yeah, you guessed it, a LinkedIn profile. Now, do you remember here? I couldn't get the surname. Whenever I search through LinkedIn and go to their profile that way, lo and behold, I get their name. Uh, sorry, this is the public profile. If I click on full profile, it goes in, it'll be the same. So look at this. Whenever I search through Google, I get the full name. If I search through LinkedIn, I don't. When I search through Google, I get add Esther to your network. When I search through LinkedIn, I don't. 
whenever I search through this, I don't know what else I'm going to get on this particular example, but you can also get this is a quite a minimal work profile. You can also get if uh, Esther here was had a tw Twitter account, it would show up. If there was other c connection details, those would show up. If if there was other information that is made public, I can get it by finding the profile through Google or Bing, but I couldn't find it by going searching directly through my network through LinkedIn. So it's very important to uh, to be aware of that. Um, we did a webinar earlier on in the year where I, at this point in time, jumped into Google search and said, this is the way to search LinkedIn. Don't bother using the LinkedIn tools. Jump in search to LinkedIn. Um, re reading some stuff more recently, uh, LinkedIn has improved their ability to search. Um, and I think that the, the voice of authorities that I'm listening to are saying that, no, we think that searching through LinkedIn first is, is a good idea, but use the use the, the x-ray search, the Google search, um, to try and get more information from them, uh, find contact details and whatever else, it can be used for that. But identify the people through LinkedIn, first of all, as a primary source. Uh, that said, I, you, you, to be a good sourcer, you need to know how to do all those things, so, so take advantage. Okay, <clears throat> what else have we got? Yeah, I want to go back and, and do this. I'm going to come back to the, the Google stuff in a second, but uh, I'll go back to this, this search result. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about you know what we're actually trying to do here. And I'm going to widen the search again. I'm going to include everybody. <coughs> I'll make the members. I need a decent pull of this. Whenever you find somebody, now put your detective hat on. Think of the mind of the sorcerer. As I click into a profile, if this is somebody that is good for me and is useful, then, uh, and because I sort by connections or so I use LinkedIn, we're getting an active in person. Scroll down and have if this person's in any groups. This person loads of groups. And if they're in a group, groups are great places to find people with, with like minds. Now, obviously, I'm just taking a wild stab in the dark guess. We're seeing some financial groups here and some IT groups and HR groups and whatever else. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if I also find recruitment group, there we go, South African recruiters group, wonderful group, <clears throat> the biggest recruiters group I've on LinkedIn, happens to be managed by myself, I wouldn't be biased in any way, uh, but it's a very good group and we, we manage it quite well in terms of, um, we, we we are quite selective about who gets into it and we do have a very large membership and a quite an active discussion. The reason I moved into the group is because if I'm looking for a recruiter, then chances are this group that that recruiter was involved in also has other recruiters in it. If I click on the members tab, I can see most of the members. And the nice thing about this is that whereas before, whenever we're doing keyword searches, we were getting large result sets. Now I don't have to be quite as specific. Now I can assume that everybody in this group is going to be close to what I'm looking for, and I can be a bit more precise about what I'm looking for. So if I say manager in here, or senior, run my search, I'm going to get people that are South African recruiters because this is a South African recruiters group uh, and I'm going to get branch managers or whatever. There's also an advanced search here uh, and again you can you can say okay location say for example I want those people in Cape Town. I've got um, 300 people that are that are um, that are in, uh, it reduces the number sets three 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 four people in Cape Town that are associated with this group uh, and that you just find my keywords this period. I was wondering what was going on there. No. Branch manager in Cape Town. Oh, LinkedIn's a little bit buggy today. Okay, 31 results. So I've got 31 branch managers in Cape Town. Um, interestingly, I found another bug on this. Uh, see the way it says uh, first connections, um, and I should be able to move to all these. For some reason, with group advanced search, it doesn't allow me to get rid of the first connections. They just stay there. And I don't know why. This is obviously a bug in, in LinkedIn. Um, but again, we can we can um, sort by keywords, <coughs> or relevance, or relationship connections, and you can do these other things. So it's really nice to see that the the LinkedIn search functions allow you to do some searching within groups. Again, the paid for products of LinkedIn allow you to do more, but you can do an awful lot with the free products. And I certainly wouldn't suggest to anybody that they start investigating spending money with LinkedIn until you become have a level of expertise within the free products. You know, this is brilliant for me. I can I can really hone in on a detailed group of people. Not only that, I know these people are in a group. So, you know, if I'm in the group, I can, um, if I join the group, I can connect with them. 
and there's a reason for me to do so, but I can also set up conversations and engage people and talk about whatever it is I'm interested in, see what reactions I get, engage people in conversations. I don't need to post advertising. That's the social thing about LinkedIn. Um, you know, it, you, you actually get people pay more attention to you, particularly the passive job seekers, if they think you're an interesting person and will be open to conversation with you if they like you, whereas if you go in and, and, and put an advertising in front of people, they'll just switch off because they're not interested. So, you know, you want to think about ways of engaging people and working with your community. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm digressing a little bit here. I'm going to go back now and have a look at this search engine, uh, Google, because as I said before, there's a whole lot of interesting things you can do to search through a, a search engine like Google or Bing, and it gives you a different way of searching LinkedIn and, it, and different results. Now, if, let's just... Take, take the basics. Say I wanted to do Twitter uh, or Recruiter or recruiter, Recruitment Consultant. If I do a Google search, what have I got? I've got 203 million results. First of all, never ever believe Google's results. They're always wrong. Uh, they, Google doesn't have that number, certainly wouldn't return that number. Google at its most will only give you a thousand results anyway, but if I move on to different pages in the result, that number seems to change randomly, so completely ignored. Uh, ultimately, in this particular search, it's just far too many people, and most of the stuff I'm finding isn't what I'm looking for if I'm looking for LinkedIn profiles. Um, if I'm looking for LinkedIn profiles, however, there's clever things I can do with Google to tell it I only want to look at LinkedIn. And what I can use is as an operator in Google called site colon, uh, let's try South Africa, za dot link dot com. Okay. Now what this does is site colon tells Google only search this particular site. When you do a search with, with Google using site colon, it's called an x-ray search, which is quite a space age type of term, which just means that I want to focus Google on a particular site. You can search any site like this. It's quite interesting to see what you come up with. Quite interesting to search Twitter and, and Google Plus and the other social sites um, to get profiles of people. And the world will open up to you in terms of the fascinating information you can find out about people and, and where you can detect people. That's a much bigger sourcing conversation to have. It's just You can imagine the immensity of the skill of a, of a good sourcer who knows where to go looking for things because the internet is absolutely massive. So what I'm doing now is that I'm getting results. I've got 25,000 results of pages within za.linkedin.com. That's the South African section of LinkedIn, and it's where all the, link, all the public profiles of people that are South Africa are there. So I can see that some of these pages that are coming up here will give me um, public profiles of <laughs> people within LinkedIn. No, well, none of those do, actually, but... Um, I'll tell you why in a moment. The reason being is if I click on one of these, as well as giving public profiles, LinkedIn is adding more and more extra pages into their, their, their website. This is a good thing in the sense that the reason they're doing it is to make their site more popular for the search engines. I'm not entirely sure how you get to a title page by searching through LinkedIn, but it's very easy to find them through a search engine. And what it gives you is names of people whose job titles are recruiter in this case in South Africa. And from here, I can move into Brett's profile uh, and see who Brett is. I know Brett and uh, connected to him. He's a very, very well-connected recruiter in South Africa. Um, and he's also got a, a massive number of recommendations. Well done, Brett. Um, but that's not a page that I'm looking for. So I have another operator uh, within Google that allows me to remove that. That page has title in it. So I can go minus in URL colon T-I-T-L title. I don't want to get bogged down with too many of these operators. They're nice and clever things to do and, and make people think you know an awful lot about searching, but ultimately what you want to do is, is, is focus in on what you're actually trying to achieve here. If I go in title, it removes pages without titles, and as you can see, I'm getting closer to finding um, profiles of people. Um, I'm trying to find somebody with a name. There we go. There's, there's a public profile there. So Andre, go there, and he is a sure it says recruiter in there somewhere, although it's not jumping out at me. Uh, it'll say recruiter somewhere in his profile, and, uh, and there we're finding people. Okay, one of the other things you can do, you saw on LinkedIn how I was able to find 
do a search specifically for a current job title. LinkedIn, uh, Google also allows you to do that. I'm just going to remove some of the stuff because I just want to simplify my search. Um, I'll leave that there at the moment. If I do a search for recruitment consultant, it's looking for exactly the phrase recruitment consultant. But within a LinkedIn profile, very often it says current job title recruitment consultant or something like that. Uh, and you can sort of tell Google to search for that. If I type in current space, star, space, a star within that type of search says to Google, find a few words in there. It doesn't matter what they are, any words at all. I want current, a few words, recruitment consultant. <clears throat> and what that means is I'm likely to find pages that have current job title, recruitment consultant. You can see them appearing here. But it also includes current senior recruitment consultant. So there's a sort of a fuzziness associated with that. Again, some of these pages are profile pages. But some of them are also directory pages. You can see the directory pages tend to come up to the top because Google thinks they're more important because there's more information there. Uh, and again, I can remove those uh, in title. I just use it, minus N U R L colon D I R. And I remove my directory pages. And now I'm getting the goal here is a profile page, and up it comes. And she's a recruitment consultant in uh, South Africa. And so it's quite a nice way to be able to go in and find, do x-ray searches to be able to find people and get profiles from this type of stuff. One of the other things you can do, and I don't know, uh, apologies if I'm inciting um, inappropriate activity, um, I think that within South Africa there are circumstances where you are allowed to legitimately search for people based on their ethnicity. Um, I know um, all the recruiters do that from an employment equity point of view, and I think you're, you're supposed to be able to do it. Um, with Google search, if you click on images, you'll get people's photographs. And that's also quite nice to do because then you get a, a sense of who they are. It's useful for LinkedIn, but it's also really useful for sourcing the internet in general because of the fact that within a Google image search, you can say, I want to see faces. And if you're typing the word in resume or CV, and you're doing that, and you say face, inevitably you're going to get uh, faces of people that are real face pictures and it'll probably have some sort of profile information about them. So it's quite a, just a nice little thing to do. Okay, <clears throat> what else is there? Yes, very exciting. Um, the, uh, I'm running out of time here actually. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Google custom searches. This is a little bit advanced, don't be scared, because this is, this is where you get quite clever. Whenever you get good at doing the, the, the x-ray searches through Google, and you say to yourself, that's good, that's working well, and you want to tell your friends about it and tell other recruiters, use this, this will work well for you. It can be quite difficult because these strings can be quite complicated. Site colon, za dot colon, LinkedIn dot com, minus in your LDIR, minus in your title, well, whatever, lots of operators can be complicated. So you can go into Google, it's google.com forward slash CSE, just that bit, and you can create a Google custom search, and I've created one here. And this is, a, this is a relatively simple one. All I'm doing is I'm saying this search, I only want to search UK's version of LinkedIn, Ireland, ie.linkedin.com, South Africa, and I want to exclude URLs with skills, title, jobs, groups, DIR. So that means I'm only going to get public profiles. I can also add in refinements into this. Now, well, before I tell you what these refinements are, let me, let me explain my thought process. I was thinking one day, wouldn't it be nice if we could do, find some way that we could search to find vacancies? Not candidates, but find vacancies. Vacancies that are exclusive. Vacancies that no other agencies know about. Wouldn't that be nice? How on earth are we going to do that? Well, my thought was this. A vacancy is created some of the time when somebody leaves a company and goes somewhere else. So how do you find out when people leave companies. Well, you could find when people leave companies if they start another job. And LinkedIn is quite good at telling you when people start jobs because they update their profile. So what I did was I created a few refinements on that. And one of them here says, recently started a position in South Africa. I'll show you what I did. I'll click on edit. And what it does is it says, this refinement says, put into Google, search the site za.linkedin.com. So I'm only looking for LinkedIn files. But look for the phrase in the profile, present brackets one month. Because whenever you put in start, date, and end date on a job on your profile, Google says, you have been here for a year, three years. And if it says, so working from, say, um, August 2011 to present, brackets one month. 
is going to appear in the profile. And what this does is find people who've just recently moved jobs. Now this is quite complicated. I'm not expecting you to, well, you can welcome to write all this down and try and create it yourself, but you don't have to because this is a Google custom search. It means I can share it and I have shared it. Have a look at this URL, www.intel-sw.com forward slash search.php. Let me just put this on my chat window at this moment of time just to make sure you have it. And send. There we go. Send it to you. Have a look at this. What this is a Google custom search. And I'll put in recruiter or recruitment consultant. It gives me just link in public profiles. Look at all these people. These are all recruiters or recruitment consultants in Ireland, South Africa, or UK, around the world. But I've got refinements, so I can say I only want to see those South Africans who are recruiters or recruitment consultants, and here they all are. And I can also do my refinement, recently started a position in South Africa, and what I'm getting now, public profiles, where somewhere in the profile it says present to one month, present to one month, Cape Town. Let's go to, I, I don't know from this profile before I've looked at it, so apologies if it doesn't give me what I want. So this is um, Lisa, who works for Ad Talent, but... She's been present two months. Prior to that, she was in Career Dynamics. Oh, no, she wasn't. She says present six months. So, okay, that's a, a bad example. This person appears to be working two jobs at this moment. So hold on, let me try and find another profile that will give me something a bit more uh, concrete. Uh, okay, here we go. Leanne. So, Leanne currently works for AVI, uh, present two months. Prior to that, was branch manager, Orange Recruiting where she left. So chances are Orange Recruiting may well have internally promoted a branch manager or looking to recruit somebody. You understand the theory. Uh, it's a way of identifying a potential client. So here I'm doing a, 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 a search, an internet search, to try and find opportunities to do things. Um, so hopefully you can see from that there's all sorts of exciting variations on this. You know, I mean, set yourself the challenge to see what you can come up with and be creative. One other little thing on those, by the way, this doesn't say present one month. Uh, which is what we were searching for. Um, hopefully you've, you may be able to work out why that is. Google isn't in real time. Google indexes sites and it usually takes them a few weeks, maybe a month or so, to find it. So Google obviously indexed this person in July or within the one month, which was within the last few weeks. This is now, for those people watching the recording, this is now August. Um, and so whenever I go here, but it's still quite relevant, it's still quite new. and so. It's a way of spotting opportunities. If you like that search, it's on our website, intel-sw.com forward slash search. I have no intention of changing it at this moment in time. If I can improve it, I will do. Use it. Set that as your home page uh, and, and use it. It's a wonderful search. See if you happen to do all the x-ray stuff. It just does it for you. So it's a wonderful way of doing a great search on, on, on LinkedIn. Finally, before I go, uh, I'm going to keep this really quick. I don't. We don't use these things to... Uh, promote our products, or well, we do from time to time when we do it. Like, but this is a LinkedIn session. This is intelligence. Intelligence is for a recruitment agency to manage all their information, candidates and clients, and help you make more placements. If you want to know about more about it, give me a call. But what I want to show you is our LinkedIn importing tool. And the reason we designed this, we took some of our search technology, built it into our products, and said, how can we make this really easy? And this tool allows you to say, okay, I'm looking for a recruitment consultant in South Africa. We've got a three-step process. Step one, search for public profiles. You, you'll understand how this automates what we, what we made complicated now making simple. It creates your x-ray search in Google and gets all the profiles. I think I'll probably move this over to our custom search file soon. Step number two, get public profiles. It pulls in all the names and the, the URLs of those people and their profiles. I can pull in a thousand of these if I want to. I have done. It means that I've loaded our contact database with recruiters, so whenever I go and look at a prospective company, I've got a whole lot of people that I know that work there. If I remove something, I don't want to pull them all in. Uh, sorry, did I get that? No. Sorry, two seconds here. Okay, let's, let's remove those people. Uh, step number two, uh, two is I press import all profiles. That wasn't giving me the results I expected. What it does now is it opens up a public profile for the individual, It'll move to their full profile, logging in as me. And then once it does that, if I go to intelligence, it should put in that profile. There we go. It pulls in the profile. It gets me the name of the candidate, puts in the photograph. Uh, this person we haven't got contact details for, which is a bit of a pity. 
Um, we've got, sorry, we do. We've got their Twitter name in there. So I can connect with her on Twitter. I've got all our employment history. And I've even got re references and referrals that I've pulled in, which is massively useful. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm still covered. It also <coughs> what I can also do from here is create a formatted CV. Press one button. Sorry, pardon me, my, my throat is going this year. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> Press one button. Immediately, it'll create a CV. Canada's photograph, contact details, uh, uh, sorry, <coughs> summary. <coughs> oh, dear, dear, this is, this is not good at all. Apologies for coughing into a microphone. Contact details. It's perfect. It needs to be tidied up, but it's an interesting starting point. So I just wanted to show you how, with search technology, with a bit of software, with a bit of, bit of cleverness, there's an awful lot you can do. And that's pretty well it for this week. Next week, I'm talking about Google+. Plus. We've got a lot of sourcing stuff that's happening on there. Very exciting. You need to get involved in that. It's brand new. It's only been out a few weeks. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I'm dying. I'm just ending this in time. Um, and then two weeks' time, we've got another LinkedIn webinar. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please get in touch. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're in South Africa and a recruiter, please join the South African Recruiters Group. And if you'd like to write me a recommendation or a referral on my LinkedIn group, I w or on my LinkedIn profile, I would be delighted and very happy to do that if you enjoy it. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.